Hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to everyone who's uh, here either live in person uh, from the LGMA Pavilion in Glasgow uh, at the COP26 or from those of you who are connecting from many different parts of the world uh, to follow this event. Uh, welcome one and all. My name is Jordan Harris. Uh, I'm the program coordinator uh, for the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy in the Americas, counting on uh, support from the European Union Foreign Policy Instrument. Uh, and I'd like to give you all uh, a warm welcome to our event, Accelerating Local Climate Action in Small and Medium-Sized Municipalities Committed to the GCOM, Looking at Best Practices from Across the Americas. We have uh, a stellar cast of speakers and panelists uh, to share experiences uh, from across the Americas uh, today. Uh, so I'm here just to uh, provide just a very brief background. We know, right, that small and medium-sized cities uh, make up the majority uh, of cities from across the world who are experiencing the most extreme impacts of climate change and who also have several challenges and obstacles to face in preparing themselves for the challenge that uh, climate change represents for them. Uh, we also know that there are many innovative experiences that uh, we can share from across, from cities from across the Americas. Uh, and that's the idea of our session today is to look at some of these experiences, provide an opportunity for dialogue and see how we can scale up ambition and action through these different bundling approaches, uh, small and medium sized cities joining forces in order to gain uh, more access to, to climate funding and to be able to uh, increase their ambition uh, and their capacities for, for climate planning and action. So without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce our, our first speakers uh, to provide us with some opening remarks uh, in this panel. It's my distinct pleasure uh, to invite Mario Mariani, who's the head of uh, the FPI regional team in the Americas uh, from the European Union. So Mario, the floor is yours, go right ahead. Thank you, thank you, Jordan, and uh, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to everyone. Uh, and thanks for inviting me uh, to introduce this, this side event uh, today. You spoke about sharing experiences. I remember the first time I heard the expression covenant of mayors. I was posted for the EU in Morocco, and I was asked to monitor a grant for a new thing that the town of Saleh had, uh, had just won. And it was called uh, a covenant of mayor and Europe and Morocco. So I looked into it. I found it interesting. And I remember at the time I was a little bit skeptical and I was thinking, well, where is this going to end? Where is it going to go? Now, if I think that this is just over 10 years ago, it's amazing. It's astonishing the, the progress the strength that this network has reached and how much it has managed to expand uh, throughout, throughout the planet. So it's undoubtedly a great success and I would not have guessed 10 years ago that we would be here today. Now, these are important, they're crucial days. Uh, we have the COP uh, uh, unfolding these days and I can only hear recall the statement that uh, Vice President for the Green Deal, Franz Timmermans, has been repeatedly making these days. What we need now is more ambition, uh, more action to, to tackle climate change. Now this ambition, I would say even more the action uh, needs towns and cities uh, around the globe to be key players. Uh, cities and towns are certainly part of the problem, uh, part of the issues because of the emissions that we all generate in towns and cities, but they are clearly the ones that can come with the innovative, the create, creative and the really impactful uh, solutions. As EU, we've been a very proud uh, leader in supporting the Covenant of Mayors uh, for many years in different regions through different instruments. You mentioned the FBI in the case of the Americas, and we're very proud of the success of over 11,000 cities and towns participating uh, around the globe. Now, I would like to uh, reflect on this success and look at how uh, we can maybe see uh, developing even more the result and the impact of, uh, of this engagement. And the first area I would like to flag is precisely action implementation. We have in the Americas the second largest covenant uh, in, in terms of uh, the, the different regions, the different continents with over 700 towns and cities participating. And I think now, uh, apart from building and strengthening this network, we really need to look at implementing some of the measures, some of the strategies, 
some of the solutions that are helping us get to more sustainable urban models. And of course, as EU, we have the hope that these solutions, models and strategies will somehow have a strong link with the European Green Deal that we hope will not just be a European Green Deal, but a world Green Deal, looking at ways that we can make growth more sustainable and move towards a more just and balanced transition. And the second suggestion I would like to make is uh, looking at uh, reinforcing even more the multi-level approach of the Covenant of May. As you were mentioning, Jordan, before, how uh, the role of medium-sized and small-sized towns and cities is crucial in this respect. And we know that the models tell us that we're going to have an increase in population, particularly in those towns and cities. And here, for example, I'd like to mention the initiative of Mayor Kelly of Kansas, who is working as a leading force behind the Metro Scale Initiative. I think we should try to see not only how to, we can expand even more the network to include medium and smaller towns, towns and cities, but also reinforce them, empower them and make them a more an active participant in new initiatives. So I would like to leave you with those two thoughts as words of introduction, and I wish you a good exchange today. But more importantly, I want to see where the global covenant of mayors will be in 10 years time. And I hope that there will be even then another resounding success and a surprise uh, from my side, as I've had looking now back at the 10 years before. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mario, uh, for your very inspiring and welcome remarks uh, and reflections on this last 10 years of your experience of, of, uh, of you know, having known uh, the covenant from its, from its beginning and now looking back at all the progress that it's made. And hopefully we would be able to look back at this moment in 10 more years and see that uh, we've made the same amount of progress, if not more, than what you've observed uh, in this past decade. Uh, would, I would now like to uh, give the floor to Nuria Marin. Nuria is president of the Diputación de Barcelona uh, to provide us with some welcoming remarks now in Spanish. Uh, so I would like to remind everyone who's connected online that you have the ability also, uh, you have access to simultaneous translation. Down below there is the interpretation option. You can listen to any of the speakers either in English, Spanish or Portuguese. Go ahead, Nuria, the floor is yours. Adelante, Nuria. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And the first thing is to thank the organizers the for the invitation that you have made to me to participate here. And I do it, as you said, as a chairman of the Chamber of, uh, of Representatives in Barcelona. And I want to greet you. I'm very happy to greet you. For two uh, reasons. First, uh, because of our experience uh, uh, in uh, the cooperation with uh, the regional and local cities, and also uh, for our commitment against the climate change. We have celebrated 40 years in our service of the environment. It was the first one in all Spain, and now it has become, it has become now the, an optimum area in all the areas. So from the first, we started uh, being committed with this uh, covenant global convent in 2008. We were the first coordinators of the covenant in Europe and Barcelona was always the vanguard. And also uh, this uh, uh, covenant shows that locally we have uh, worked uh, in favor of the climate change. And there are 10,750 municipalities in Europe. So um, all the cities are part of the covenant. And so our message is clear, is solid. This, this uh, covenant it really works and it gives good results. And uh, we are also liaison with uh, other different at li different levels of government so that they can comp compromise and commit themselves. And I hope that in this session, we can exper uh, exchange experience, we can reinforce our reinforce our activities looking at 
the climate issue in the small and medium sized towns and cities and uh, the experience in Barcelona has a lot to do Barcelona is um, globally known because of its capital it's uh, a global destination right, surrounded by a metropolitan area of more than 3 million inhabitants it could be surprising that of the 300 plus that's uh, 300 plus municipalities that are in our provinces, 86% are less than 20,000 inhabitants. And um, a third of them have less than 1,000 inhabitants. They are called micro municipalities. And our territory uh, have uh, industrialized areas that are very active, one of the most active in Europe. And uh, we have forests, 50%, and we have natural parks that are protected, and they have a great value. So our greatest challenge is the uh, balance to guarantee good services, uh, basic services. And from this, uh, wherever people live, and uh, to uh, guaranteed the best and we are uh, committed to the people 25% of our population live in municipalities that are adhered to the covenant and we also but uh, some of the municipalities have uh, less uh, uh, technological and monetary resources so that's why it is so important to have the support or the support that we give them. So these municipalities need us to be able to execute uh, the energy um, problems, to have the biomass for therm thermal uses to be more efficient energy-wise in the buildings, in the public lighting, in mo electric uh, mobility, to give you some examples. To give you an example, currently we are allotting as uh, 4 million euros for photovoltaic cells. And these projects are possible because we are part of a set of a group of public administrations. We are collaborating because we share a common goal and a target. So we are here with the European Union and that's why we receive also some funds for the uh, European regional funds, and we are receiving resources for those projects that I mentioned of 40 boilers and 17 um, photovoltaic cells. And so also we are in charge to facilitate the creation of these projects. Logically, the smaller municipalities uh, need more help, more attention, more specific. So that's why we need the balance, like I said. Our technical support and the financial support is at the service of all the municipalities of the prov province. We offer programs, resources, so that we can accelerate those local actions that uh, to be able to reduce the emissions carbon and uh, to reach our goal in 2050. And also, we uh, think uh, the sustainable aspect. We so it's uh, we start working from our own home house. We want to decarbonize uh, carbonized uh, this and to reduce fifty five percent of the emissions for the thirties to be neutral climate. Uh, climate wise for 2050. We hope to approve this plan in the uh, first semester of 2020 to increase our cap uh, capability of uh, resources and resilience. Uh, we are very happy to be here, to be here to share our work and to encourage you to continue developing and enhancing like we do all those commitments and compromises of the regions of the municipalities. This uh, global convenient is an instrument that is useful, is efficient, and uh, it's part of this uh, summit in Glasgow. So it is very important of course 
And we should look not only backwards, but we have to see also the challenge that we have in front of us. That is quite challenging. It demands a lot, a lot of uh, from us, but it's a challenge for the life uh, of the people, for the life of planet and diversity. And like John Posse said, uh, the uh, climate expert, she said, when you realize the value of life, you worry less on the past and uh, definitely you do want to do something for the future so in this uh, fight in this struggle that we are committed that for the municipalities no matter their size to do something congratulations and thank you very much thank you very much uh, without a doubt uh, barcelona has been a leading example for many many years uh, of of how we can scale up uh, ambition and action and and an inspiring example for this panel of how you've included uh, many of these smaller or micro municipalities, as if you've, you've mentioned uh, in, in these efforts. So I would like to thank very kindly both of our uh, introductory panelists, Mario Mariani uh, of the European Union and Nuria Marin for, for providing us with these very valuable reflections that uh, we'll definitely uh, keep in mind and come back into play during the panel discussion. Uh, so the GCOM, uh, the, the Global Covenant of Mayors, uh, is uh, you know the largest alliance of local governments for climate leadership in the world, but it does not act alone. It acts uh, in a close coordination in a grand family uh, of over 100 different key partners and organizations, of which we have the luck of having co-organized this event with two of the leading organizations uh, in the world uh, today. So we are joined by both ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability, uh, who will be supporting the, the moderation of our high level panel discussion. And we are also supported by the World Wildlife Fund, uh, specifically through the WWF Cities Program. And I have the distinct pleasure of uh, introducing now a friend and colleague who is uh, joining us on the ground from Glasgow in the LGMA Pavilion. Um, Jennifer Lanehart is the global lead for the WWF, WWF Cities program, and she's going to provide us uh, with some context setting the scene regarding uh, the challenges that we face supporting smaller and medium-sized cities with ambitious climate goals. So go ahead, Jennifer, the floor is yours. Excellent. I just wanted to test to see if that mic works and uh, everything is working smoothly here. Jordan, thank you so much, as well as Mario and Nuria. Uh, we miss you here in Glasgow. It's a beautiful pavilion. It's, it's a real space of partnership. So, uh, but we have seen you live and in person, larger than life, I should say, actually, uh, and, and your comments have really set the stage here. Uh, so I have the great pleasure of talking about some of the numbers, some of the statistics to really set the scene as we go forward uh, to accelerate local climate action in medium -sized, small and medium-sized cities. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so, here are some of the numbers. I'm not going to repeat them. I want to show you uh, many of us in the room are urban experts. So just to kind of keep uh, attuned to those big numbers that are behind us, or in, in my case, behind me, I should say. Um, but not just the, the numbers in terms of the staggering population statistics or the carbon emissions or the natural resource consumption, but also the fact that cities are so instrumental to really shifting away from these numbers, to moving towards a more resilient future. And cities, of course, are so impacted by climate change. They are the contributors to climate change, but they are also the, the, the front line for the consequences of climate change. And we see time and again, uh, brilliant city leaders who understand this and are really willing to act. Uh, so next slide, please. So here are just uh, a few of the numbers on the ground uh, when we talk about small and medium sized cities. And it's a little bit hard for me to read this because it's so big and so massive that it's it's just right there. Um, but I wanted to, to say that um, we have, in essence, taken some statistics and okay, we talk about mega cities, we talk about cities very generally, but what about cities of certain sizes? Uh, so roughly 57% of urban population is in cities of 1 million or less. Um, and this is even more important in, in some parts of the world. For example, uh, by 2030, cities with less than 1 million will count for 32% of the total urban population in Latin America. 
38% in Asia and 47% in Sub-Saharan Africa. So these are really, really uh, important numbers. When we think about cities, we can't just think about the big cities. We have to think about the importance of the small and medium-sized cities as well. Um, Latin America, uh, which of course is a, a, an important representation of us here, uh, is the highest uh, urbanization, has the highest urbanization rates, uh, both huge opportunities, uh, but also challenges. So if we could go to the next slide and talk about some of those challenges and also opportunities. I mean, when we, when we talk about cities, uh, specifically small, medium-sized cities, uh, there are a lot of real issues that we need to pay attention to. First of all, funding, access to funding, Readiness. Are cities actually ready to really understand how to access funds? Uh, they have great ideas, they have great visions, but where to find that money, how to create uh, the right program that actually can achieve and receive those funds and from where, from development banks or from private funds or perhaps uh, public private funds, but you know, where, how? And What's great about this is I think uh, I want to I love what Jordan said about family and we're definitely doing this in partnership um, with the Global Covenant, with ECLE, with C40, with so many others, including through the city's climate finance leadership alliance to really help cities to access that funding. Um, another issue is capacity. Capacity is a challenge for large cities and small cities, but sometimes it can really uh, challenge a smaller city that might have less access or a smaller department to really know what to do with the issue. We're all citizens. We all live somewhere, whether it's in the city or the rural environment. We see what's changing around us, but there's so much uncertainty and change is so rapid. We, most of us don't have the capacity, even if we consider ourselves experts. Things are changing constantly. So of course, for a smaller city on the front line of climate change, this is an even bigger issue. And again, this is where the, the importance of partnership, learning from other cities, learning from experts is, is so very crucial. Um, and where those of us who work in this field are very excited to work with cities and, and in solidarity with the challenges that, that cities are facing. Um, so yeah, I, I put that there, networks. Networks are so, so crucial uh, in order to help cities to really generate this space. Um, another big issue hitting all cities, but in particular small and, small and medium-sized cities that are really emerging is rapid growth projections and the inability to really have planned growth. So we have a lot of problems with unplanned or unequal expansion. So you might have one part of the city that is really sprawling or another part of the city that is faced with urban um, informal settlements or areas of the city that are being uh, built on hillsides or in riverbeds and, and very vulnerable areas that should be frankly, protected for nature, because these are not safe places for people to live. And they're also very important places for, for nature to thrive. Um, and then I, higher rates of poverty is, is a reality that a lot of small and medium sized cities face. Um, and how do we help cities to really counter or support um, upward mobility so that people, everyone who moves to the city for the bright lights and the opportunities that cities face uh, has access to that. And I think education is, of course, a very crucial aspect there, uh, but also safety, access to employment, um, and many other issues. Um, and then I just wanted to say competition versus collaboration. And I added that point because that came up in a panel that I was a part of yesterday. And how can cities, especially in a region, learn to not compete to, with each other for resources, but to collaborate, to learn from each other, whether it's innovative energy solutions, transportation solutions, water management, especially when we talk about natural resources, nature doesn't have boundaries the way humans do. So how can we you know, really ensure that this is a collaborative space? And I think what's most exciting is that cities are the places of collaboration. Humans collaborate naturally when we live in cities. I think local governments need to and are, especially through networks. Um, just to move on to the opportunities, cities have to be uh, big enough to really justify investments, whether it's in investments in infrastructure uh, or investments in new ideas but also small enough to stay, stay connected. And I think this is a real opportunity space for small and medium-sized cities. The importance of engaging your public and improving social cohesion, identity, 
you know, the, the place to base pride of where I am from and I am proud to be part of this community, that gets a little easier sometimes in, in, in smaller cities, knowing your neighbors, knowing that you can be a part of that solution and that change. Cities are constantly evolving and how can we really help them become spaces of sustainability? Um, uh, connecting rural and urban populations to basic facilities and services. This is very, very important in, in many different places, uh, not least when we talk about the relationship between the urban and the rural and where a lot of cities are located. Interesting to note that, that many cities are actually located in the most fertile areas because when humans started to settle, we started to settle in places that had good soil, that had good access to water, that had good access to fishing resources, natural resources to build up our habitats. So, you know, this connection to the natural environment and to our rural communities is so important. And we can't just talk about the urban or the rural. It has to be about the synergy between. Um, next slide, please. So I'm just going to really rapidly go through a little bit of what WWF is doing, because I think Jordan talked about the importance of data. Um, and this is uh, something that we're very proud of with WWF, the One Planet City Challenge. We've had more than 700 cities join us, 280 cities that have joined us this year. Um, and it's still open until December. So if you're, you're keen on it, I can provide you more information and or certainly uh, log on and just find it on the Internet. Uh, next slide, please. And I add this primarily because we do this in partnership. Uh, so the One Planet City Challenge is really uh, a method to help cities to report their data. Um, we know that everything starts with data. You need to measure where you are in order to know where you're going. So instead of creating our own platform, we said, let's work with the experts. So we joined forces with ICLE, and I am sorry, my friends at ICLE, I'm using your old logo and you have a brilliant new one, but uh, uh, shout out to the great work you're doing anyways. So we work with ICLE and CDP, and we, we ask cities to report their data on their platform. And then we are inspired by the questions that the Global Covenant of Mayors is asking cities to report on. So we use that to actually request cities to report on the Global Covenant of Mayors questions. And then we use that data inspired by what C40 has done with uh, aligning cities to 1.5. And we've created an assessment framework. So when cities do their data reporting that is required by the Global Covenant of Mayors within the ECLA CDP platform, we can see how closely they are aligned to the 1.5 degree target uh, within the Paris Agreement. Um, and if they're not there, which most cities are not, uh, but the good thing is we've seen actually an, a growth of cities that are aligned to 1.5. And for those cities that are not there, we provide some tools and guidance both globally, but also at the, the local and national level. Next slide, please. Um, just want to wrap up a little bit here to say, you know, these are some of the things that, that we're proud about with the One Planet City Challenge. Certainly recognition and collaboration with our partners, with the city networks, and also how can we give, you know, a little bit of what we might call it WWF Panda Power, that visibility that we can do, the credibility of demonstrating some of the work of uh, these fantastic cities, strategic feedback to uh, see where you are in terms of your goals, and certainly how we can support on citizen engagement. That, that important component of it's not just about local leaders, it's about the people that live in those cities. Next slide, please. So yesterday we launched uh, this new report Transforming Cities Together, which is a public engagement guide for cities. Um, it is in English, Spanish, and Bahasa uh, from Indonesia. So uh, we're very happy to have it in several languages. And we, have, uh, we will be rolling out a series of workshops in some of those languages as well. Uh, it was supported by the British Council, so I should flag that as well. Next slide, and we're, I'm just about done here. This is a little bit some of the aspects that we're looking at in that guide. So how to define your goals, uh, be transparent with your city, with your citizens, be inclusive, show your commitment and trust. You know, trust is something that we don't talk enough about, but we really need to see if we're going to see these sustainable cities of the future, cities of resilience. We need to trust our citizens and we need to be honest with them. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is just to say uh, our public engagement guide started from another campaign we have called We Love Cities. And the name is chosen on purpose because you have to love where you live if you want to be part of its journey towards sustainability. So this is both an online campaign where we actually ask citizens actually vote for their city, but it's also an offline engagement where citizens might plant trees or they might uh, pick up trash and they do it sometimes in competition between local governments and local NGOs. So we see that this is a, a real possibility uh, to help 
build that momentum in partnership. Uh, next slide. I think this is my final slide just to say that uh, we are working in some other areas as, as well. So I, I shout this out to other city leaders who might wanna work with us on urban nature and also on urban food systems. Again, not doing this alone, but doing this in partnership with cities and with a lot of the city networks. We have a few policy papers. We also have this great new guide, which provides some examples of urban nature-based solutions and critically, the co-benefits of doing so. Cost savings, job improvements, improvements to temperature, uh, resilience, um, air quality. So, you know, it's, it's really, we have to show that this is possible and that this is happening and to build that momentum. Next slide. And that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jennifer, uh, for your for your energy, for your inspiration. Uh, always a pleasure to hear from you and have that Panda Power represented in our event. So we really appreciate that. I think that was a really great way to kind of set the scene for uh, the discussion that's coming. As always, really appreciate your focus on collaboration as we're looking now to examples of how uh, different small and medium-sized cities uh, can work together. It's also important, oh, as always, right, how we work together as networks supporting these cities, right? So uh, how WWF and C40 and ICLE and CDP and others uh, work closely together, right, to make sure uh, that these cities are getting the support that they need. So now uh, for, the, uh, for the main event, um, I would like to uh, introduce, it's a pleasure to introduce colleagues from ICLE. Uh, so I would uh, pass now the uh, hand the, the the word over to Angie Fife, who's executive director of ICLE in the United States, uh, and Rodrigo Corradi, uh, who's head of advocacy for ICLE in South America. They will both be co-moderating this panel, as we have a, a, pan, a high level panel of authorities from throughout the Americas, from Canada, the United States, Brazil, and Argentina. Uh, so without further ado, Angie, uh, I hand it over to you and to Rodrigo. Uh, go right ahead and may you have an excellent panel. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jordan. And hello, everyone. Jennifer, I wish I was there in Glasgow to give you a, a hug. I always enjoy seeing you at, at these events. And thanks so much for your, your energy, as Jordan said. Uh, Angie Fife, calling in from Denver, Colorado. Um, I'm happy to represent the ICLE USA network. And um, we'll give a little bit of an overview of the panel and then turn it over to my colleague, Rodrigo, to introduce our four panelists. Um, also want to um, give a shout out to WWF and their One Planet Cities Challenge methodology for creating science-based targets. This year, we have spent um, quite a bit of time in the U.S. working with ICLE U.S. members to help them develop science-based targets. These are targets that they need to achieve in terms of emissions reductions by 2030 in order to be on track for zero emissions at 2050. And we'll be releasing a report of 148 cities that we've analyzed in the US and their ability to meet these aggressive targets. So thanks to WWF and One Planet Cities Challenge for that methodology. Um, I also want to mention that um, in, in the context of small, today we're talking about small in terms of population. I want to note that the largest city in terms of land mass in the United States is the city of Wrangell, Alaska. 2,500 square miles, 6,500 square kilometers, 3,000 inhabitants. Um, so we're talking about population today and not size um, in terms of geography, but of course that um, large city, small population is also um, ripe with its own unique challenges and opportunities. So um, thanks, I look forward to this discussion with these four wonderful leaders. Rodrigo, would you like to take it from here? Thank you, Angie and, and all the organizers here present. My name is Rodrigo Corradi. I'm from Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, in the position of Deputy Executive Secretary for ICLE South America. It's a pleasure to be joining you all, to be with Angie in this, in this moderation role that we can uh, have the capability to listen and to, and to take the experience of the leaders uh, of our regions that are here uh, to present the way in which they were able to attract uh, not only good results locally, but to be able in the network that we together here at GCON Americas are able to amplify their experience, to identify the way in which they can be examples for other cities 
around the region and around the world. So uh, it's my great pleasure that Rodrigo, I think you've been muted. Uh, I believe so. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Uh, I believe that you missed everything that I said. See if, if that's correct. Uh, just, no, no, the no. Last, just the last part. Just the last few uh, seconds. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. So, so it was. We, it would be a bummer if it was everything. So I believe that we can follow uh, for the for the next phase to see. Uh, the ones that we actually want to to listen to. We're going to have in this panel uh, Dan Arnold, Mayor of uh, Moncton in Canada. We're going to also have here representing uh, United States, uh, Mr. Mike Kelly, Mayor of Horan Park in Kansas City's metro region. We're going to have my 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 country fellow, uh, Mayor Fernanda de Souza Hassan Cesar from the city mayor from the city of Brasileia in Brazil, in the Amazons. And you're gonna have the opportunity to listen to Dr. Carlos Briner, mayor de Belleville in Argentina. Um, we think that we're gonna have an, an interesting moment here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass to, to Andy to, to, to make the questions for our, uh, for our North American um, fellows and I believe that's going to be the best that I make the questions for my uh, South American fellows here down under but uh, the first of all I want to thank you all for your time to be here with us sharing this moment and to have the opportunity that in in different language we can be one America here presenting our experience Angie Thank you, Rodrigo, and welcome to our leaders. Um, thank you so much for being a part of this panel. We'd like to start um, north and move our way south. So we will start um, with Mayor Arnold um, from Canada. And we have a couple of questions um, for our panelists. We'll give them an opportunity first, of course, to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about the, the context in which you are leading and um, working with your citizens. Um, so let us begin with an introduction from Mayor Arnold, and then if you would please, you can answer the following question. Um, we're looking for um, your input regarding challenges your municipality is facing or has faced um, as a small or intermedi intermediary city when implementing your climate action planning, and how are you uh, using these collaborative and bundled approaches um, to do more? So over to you, please, Mayor Arnold. Well, thank you so much, Angie. Uh, so I'm coming to you today from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be here to talk about such an important topic. And I'm coming to you from the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq and Maliseet people. So Moncton is on the far east coast of Canada with a population of about 80,000 people, but we're part of a tri-community of about 150,000. And I'm looking out my window right now at our beautiful beautiful uh, Petakodiak River. It's a tidal river. So the tide flows in from the Bay of Fundy. And I like to say that the pulse of the universe flows through our city every 12 hours. So every 12 hours, the tide comes in and goes out. So we are part of the UNESCO Fundy Biosphere. And like many mid-sized cities, we are seeing the results of climate change in an intimate and profound way every single day, whether it is blue-green algae in our water supply, or extreme weather events. In April of 2019, like many of you, the city of Moncton joined the global covenant of cities uh, around the world by declaring a movement of cities around the world by declaring a climate emergency. And of course, we are part of the global covenant of mayors for climate and energy. And this has been really great. Uh, as I think Jennifer said, it measures where we are. We need to measure where we are to know where we need to go. And uh, we've worked cooperatively with many different organizations such as Quest Canada, ICLE, uh, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities and many others. From a climate change adaptation perspective, we've done a number of major studies on climate change adaptation, flood management, mi flood mitigation, uh, 69 different actions, many of which have been accomplished. And some of these that we've done under some of these plans include 
floodplain mapping, identification of vulnerable areas and infrastructure, changes to our zoning bylaw, increased uh, habitable space elevation and water course protection measures. Uh, we have new policies to assist with flood protection. We have a net zero increase in storm water runoff policy. Infrastructure design requirements, the one in 100 year storm plus 20%. Naturalized storm water management guidelines and pilot projects. We have naturalized detention ponds, bioswales, rain gardens, that sort of thing, and a backwater valve incentive program. From a climate change mitigation perspective, uh, we had previously adopted the Federation of Canadian Municipalities recommended greenhouse gas emissions reduction targets of 20% uh, reduction in corporate emissions by 2020. But we know that these targets are entirely insufficient and more aggressive action is definitely required. So after we declared a climate emergency in 2019, we retained a consultant to complete a community energy and emissions plan, a SEEP. The SEEP will be completed by the end of December. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, uh, but I, I think it's going to be uh, rather shocking for all of us to see what is going to really be needed to reach these uh, goals. However, major climate mitigation actions that we have completed include, we have a green roof here at City Hall. All of our traffic lights and street lights have been converted to LED. We've installed a biomass heating system to replace an oil heating system. We've constructed two zero net facilities, uh, both were pools that include solar hot water and solar photo, uh, photovoltaic panels. We've installed um, energy vehicle charging stations with lots more to come. Municipal, we have a municipal green building policy that all buildings that are 500 square meters or greater must be designed to lead or green globe standards. We do energy audits and energy efficiency retrofits on all of our municipal buildings. Uh, we have an active transportation plan, which means that even yes, in snowy Canada, I bike to work six months of the year every single day. Uh, we have a tree planting program and three stream waste uh, separation program. So we've done the easy stuff. The, the, the challenges are ahead and they are things like, um, you know, legislation within our, our province and our nation, uh, money, uh, the storytelling, the leadership that needs to take place and the collaboration. So I'm really, really um, thankful to be here today and looking forward to hearing some great ideas from others to inspire our path forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Arnold, and good luck with the SEEP. We look forward to getting an update from you uh, as soon as that is released and uh, really appreciate your, your kind um, introduction to your beautiful city. Uh, I love the pulse uh, analogy of, of your river. Um, thank you for that. Um, let's turn to Mayor Mike Kelly um, from Roland Park. Welcome, Mayor. Angie, thank you so much for the introduction uh, and thank you so much to the Global Covenant of Mayors to the World Wildlife Fund, to, to ICLEI, uh, for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, good morning from Roland Park, Kansas. My name is Mike Kelly and I'm the mayor of Roland Park, Kansas. Uh, we are a first string suburb within the Kansas City metropolitan area, located in the uh, cross section of Kansas and Missouri. We like to say the heart of America. So to Mayor Arnold's point about the pulse of the universe, we're the heartbeat of the Americas. Um, we are a region that is absolutely growing. Um, and we know that climate migration is real. Uh, we anticipate that by 2050, we'll have another half million people come to the Kansas City metropolitan area due to climate migration. Uh, and it was a, a pleasure to hear the kind words of, of Mario. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, it was very uh, heartening to hear some of the points that, that Jennifer made uh, about the challenges of small and medium-sized municipalities. Uh, I feel like I'll echo a lot of the, the panda power that was put out there this morning. Um, but obviously, financial resources uh, are difficult for small cities. Um, we also have a lack of staff professional experience when dealing with some of the unique technical challenges uh, of the, some of the solutions we want to implement. Uh, our staff is lean and they wear so many hats as it is trying to find that technical specialty in the city as small as ours uh, can prove difficult. Uh, like many in America, we uh, suffer from regional political polarization and at, at 
at times a, a disbelief in scientific evidence. The pandemic has surely shown us that. So to Jennifer's point, a lot of the times we need to speak dollars and cents. And, and luckily the solutions of what we need to do are things that we want to do. And a lot of times recognizing to municipalities that a lot of the good things that they're already doing for their own sake, for their fiscal impact, uh, is a good way to uh, move forward with uh, the climate impacts thereof. Um, we also rely so much on regional partnership. And like others, then our challenge re leads directly to our opportunity. We're, we were very grateful for the assistance of the Global Covenant of Mayors uh, in creating a, a pilot project. We had the uh, desire to join the Global Covenant of Mayors and receive that technical assistance to do climate action planning. But being in a region of 2.2 million people, uh, it was not feasible for each individual municipality to join the Global Covenant and to do that work. We were worried about gaps, uh, but also making sure that this uh, emissions inventory and climate plan would be comprehensive since we are so interdependent and we move in between municipalities so much on any given day. So through the, the leadership and the ingenuity of the Global Covenant, we were able to create this pilot program along with other regional uh, metropolitan areas across the country, including Washington, D.C., uh, Denver, and, and Chicago, to create a regional climate plan. Had the climate plan only been done for Kansas City, Missouri proper, it would have been half a million people, and that is great. But through this regional climate planning, we're able to have now a climate plan with a comprehensive emissions inventory, a climate risk and vulnerability assessment to Kansas City's very real climate vulnerabilities, including drought, urban heat, and flooding. Uh, and also a, a plan that had over a thousand professionals touch the plan that sets Kansas City's entire metropolitan region on the path towards net zero by 2050 with goals for net zero local governments by 2030, net zero energy by 35, and net zero built structures uh, by 2040. Um, the collaborative approach is, is already paying dividends. One, one great example is our Renewables Direct program. Working with our electric utility and really leaning into uh, the nature-based solutions that we have, Kansas has an incredible opportunity for wind power. Now, each individual municipality themselves cannot necessarily avail themselves uh, of creating a wind farm, but through aggregating and collaborating together, we're able to aggregate contracts and acquire the wind farm that now allows municipalities in our region to garner up to 100% of their metered electricity from renewable sources. Uh, we were also able to create uh, a group called Climate Action KC that has over 150 local elected officials, policymakers from throughout the region uh, coming together to not only uh, discuss policy, but provide opportunities for collective procurement, for expedition of action by, by working together in, in regional partnership. So I'm, I'm very grateful for the, the partnerships that, that we have garnered, uh, looking forward to working together with, with all of you in the future, uh, and excited to learn more here of other good things going on in the Americas. So thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, Mayor Kelly. Congratulations on your regional plan. It's It's been one that we've been watching very closely and, and touting um, to other regions around the country. So well done. Um, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Rodrigo for the Latin American mayors. Thank you, Angie. And, and thank you for both mayors that were able to, to impress and to make us excited with results, but with the capability of replication of those actions that could be seen. In different in, uh, in different interactions, and to to follow this this process, I would like to to continue with my uh, my uh, colleagues from Latin America. I would like to to invite to join the floor uh, the mayor of Brasilia uh, in the state of Acre in Brazil, uh, Ms. Fernanda Souza Hessen Cesar. I I, I think uh, Mayor Fernanda that we have been in a couple of, of moments that I was always impressed by the, by 
everything that Brasileia was doing in the interaction of being a city in the, in the border, to be an Amazon city, and to be so engaged uh, in, in the leader for uh, mid sand city. So uh, please take the floor to make, uh, to make your statement. And thank you so much for joining us. Obrigada. Eu queria um bom dia a todos. Eu queria manifestar a nossa gratidão e alegria de poder estar participando de um evento onde o mundo para para se discutir as questões climáticas. E poder aqui, com muita gratidão, representar o meu país, o Brasil, representar meu estado, o estado do Acre, e trazer a voz dos povos aqui do nosso estado. né O estado do Acre é um estado aqui na região norte, na Amazônia, e que lutou para ser o povo acreano. Eu venho, sou Fernanda, prefeita de Brasileia, no estado do Acre, é um município de fronteira, vizinho da Bolívia, e também faz parte de uma cidade gêmea, a Capitaçolândia, vizinha de Assis Brasil, e temos a Trips Fronteira lá, que fazemos também fronteira com o Peru. Então, vocês podem imaginar o tamanho é, das adversidades e dos desafios que temos. Né? Eu queria também parabenizar a oportunidade, em nome da ABM, que é a Associação Brasileira dos Municípios, que tem nos dado voz, voz às prefeituras, às prefeituras de pequenos portes e médios portes, onde a gente possa estar dialogando. Eu sou fruto de discussões que nem essas, de ambientes coletivos em que a gente aprende muito nesses intercâmbios. Como é bom a gente saber a realidade, a visão europeia, a, a, a visão de tantos outros municípios que têm lutado para que nós possamos pautar as questões climáticas como uma prioridade nossa. E aí eu preciso aqui puxar um pouco é, sobre uma cidade pequena. E eu comum do pensamento que os colegas colocaram, eu me senti representada em várias falas, sobretudo na importância da unidade, sobretudo na importância do sentimento de pertencimento a um local. A gente só consegue, através municípios pequenos, municípios com recursos pequenos, com economia pequena, a gente só consegue avançar se a população fizer parte e se sentir com esse sentimento de amor e cuidado ao local. Sentimento Foi de isso amor nós... e de cuidado hacia los lugares. Por isso que nós começamos a trabalhar com a nossa população. Por isso começamos a... Somos uma cidade de 27 mil habitantes e nós temos 40% da nossa população reside na área rural, né? São moradores de área rural. Nós temos hoje, dentro do município de Brasileia, a maior parte da reserva extrativista Chico Mendes. E, para mim, a meu ponto de vista, é um dos maiores ativos econômicos ambientais do mundo, onde nós temos uma diversidade gigantesca e que precisa ser melhor protegida e que precisa ser melhor olhada. Lá nós temos 1.900 famílias que residem e sobrevivem da floresta. Hoje, nós, é, é o pensamento geral, as pessoas elas vivem na cidade. É na cidade que elas estudam, é na cidade que elas buscam a saúde, é na cidade que elas precisam da infraestrutura urbana e rural. Então, nós, é, dentro das nossas esferas do Brasil, que nós temos o poder federal, estadual, municipal, um dos maiores desafios que nós encontramos na ponta dos municípios é que nós possamos dialogar e ter a unificação de projetos para essas pessoas, que não haja divisão de transferências de que uma reserva extrativista é de responsabilidade de A, de B ou de C. Nós, dentro do município, estamos convivendo e tentando conviver com muita harmonia, e hoje eu posso garantir aos senhores que um dos maiores desafios que temos é encontrar é, na nossa região técnicos disponíveis pelas questões financeiras que o município atravessa, que são muito escassas. Nós não temos, não recebemos fundo verde. Ah, Todas ah, as iniciativas tratadas pelo município são de recursos próprios ou de tratativas de emendas parlamentares o que é bastante escasso, mas eu tenho muito orgulho de dizer 
que além desse sentimento de pertencimento do Acre e também da nossa região, nós estamos levando aos homens e mulheres da floresta saúde, estamos levando educação, estamos trabalhando um conceito dentro deles para que os moradores de lá tenham uma compreensão que é preciso a ah, ser trabalhada a questão social, a questão ambiental no sentido de querer e ter esse sentimento de pertencimento da localidade e o financeiro. Como, de que forma nós podemos fazer para essa grande floresta que nós temos é, ser tratada com o respeito em que ela merece, mas que você tenha também a valorização dos ativos econômicos que nós temos lá, como a borracha, como a castanha, como a agricultura familiar, como a pecuária de pequeno porte, como o açaí, como os trabalhos em que a prefeitura tem feito muita questão de estar presente com as nossas associações e as cooperativas, que elas hoje têm nos ajudado muito, tem sido um tripé dentro da nossa gestão, na gestão pública, e poder, paralelo a isso, a esses desafios, dentro de uma cidade pequena, que Brasileia, inclusive, é uma cidade resiliente. Nós passamos por duas grandes cheias, sofremos com as questões ambientais. Esse ano de 2021, o nosso estado, mais de 10 cidades ficaram submersas, alagadas. A minha cidade, Brasileia, Itaçolândia, Assis Brasil, que nós somos vizinhos e trabalhamos com muita irmandade, dividimos as dores, dividimos os sonhos, a nossa cidade ficou submersa quase 80% da cidade. Então, nós estamos falando de reconstruir, de reconstrução de uma cidade. E eu fico muito feliz que hoje os números, os números da nossa região nos mostram que estamos avançando. Estamos avançando na saúde de qualidade, estamos avançando na educação, estamos trabalhando para resolver a problemática da infraestrutura urbana e rural. É, eu citei como um dos maiores desafios que nós temos a, a questão da, é, da, de técnicos, é, de mão de obras qualificadas, mas nós temos um grande desafio também, que são nossas estradas vicinais, para que nós possamos explorar a economia das nossas reservas e da nossa floresta, é necessário que haja a manutenção e a garantia do direito das pessoas de ir e vir. Então, os desafios, eu ouvi meus colegas atentamente, cada um dentro das suas cidades com suas problemáticas, mas a nossa, é, de um município tão pequeno, a gente está falando é, de serviços essenciais, de serviços que nós poderíamos estar em outro patamar mas há dentro do nosso estado e há dentro do nosso município esse sentimento de crescer, esse sentimento de avançar. Ah, o, pacto de, o pacto de políticas para as prefeituras, o pacto global dos municípios pelo clima, eu quero parabenizar, é, é perfeito, é a forma que nós temos de socializar, de falarmos as mesmas, a mesma língua, é a dor que tem no Canadá, que tem em Buenos Aires, aí na Argentina, seja a mesma aqui do Acre, seja a mesma aqui do Norte, da nossa região Norte. E enquanto também vice-presidente da MAC, da Associação dos Municípios Acreanos, eu queria aqui também já dizer, nós estamos trabalhando para que a MAC, que é a Associação dos Nossos Municípios daqui, os 22 municípios, possamos fazer parte do Pacto Global dos Municípios pelo Clima. E nós já temos data para isso, vai ser agora no dia 17 de dezembro deste ano, nós vamos estar convocando uma assembleia para que os municípios acrianos possam assinar o, o, o Pacto Global e assim nós possamos avançar nessa área é, que é vital para todos nós. Thank you, Mayor. Fernanda César, it was great to have you here with us, most of all, uh, trying to demonstrate the, the, all the hardness that is, that is faced in the, in the Amazon region, a region that, uh, in the, especially in the Brazilian uh, area, you were able to, 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 to get this combination of, of different authorities and the need to try to attract the direct investments uh, for the smaller cities that you that are the, the base of the whole region. No? So uh, it was great to hear from you. It was great to, to, to listen to your experience. 
and moving on and following uh, a little bit more to the south, I would like to invite Dr. Carlos Brenner, uh, mayor of Belleville uh, in Argentina to share with us uh, a little bit of the process that is faced in Argentina uh, to identify, just to check, Mayor, Mayor Carlos Brenner, uh, gracias. Uh, to identify the capabilities of mid-sized cities in Argentina to attract such uh, wonders. And I believe that in Argentina, you were able to, to, to make different moves to jointly uh, move forward in a really robust uh, climate agenda. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Carlos, to be with us. Gracias, Rodrigo. Eh, eh, buenas tardes, estimados eh, alcaldes, prefectos, autoridades institucionales, nacionales, supranacionales, frente al cambio climático. El tiempo se agota, los compromisos se multiplican y las acciones globalmente son tan exitosas como desparejas. Faltan grandes compromisos aún que se plasmen en acciones. Los países en desarrollo padecemos la falta de políticas claras hacia la carbono neutralidad, como también carecemos de financiamiento. Como la vida transcurre casi mayoritariamente en los pueblos y ciudades, es a estos últimos donde se debe apuntar todo el esfuerzo y se debe compartir allí. El compromiso central en esta desigual lucha pasa por los intendentes mayormente, quienes gestionamos, planificamos y ejecutamos. Fijamos reglas de usos de suelos y disposición de recursos naturales. En las ciudades también se educa. Y la pregunta más importante, ¿cómo hacer para contar con financiamiento? No todos los países y provincias tienen reglas de juego claro. Entonces, ¿cómo hacemos? Respondo a esta pregunta contando qué hicimos nosotros en Argentina. En Argentina contamos con la Red Argentina de Municipios Frente al Cambio Climático, un organismo de dilatada trayectoria nacional e internacional que fiscaliza, guía y contiene a más de 250 intendentes. Ejerce un trabajo profesional e interconectado. Es así que se creó la figura financiera del Fideicomiso para la compra conjunta de materiales dirigidos a mitigar y adaptarnos al cambio climático. Ya se realizaron varias compras internacionales con ahorro notorio de divisas y aumento en la calidad del material obtenido, con resultados concretos puestos ya en nuestras ciudades, tal es el caso de luces LED, calefones eléctricos, vehículos eléctricos, eh, pantallas solares, etc. Perseguimos trabajar la confianza a través de este fideicomiso, generar mucha confianza como vínculo global sostenible en el tiempo. Nuestra red argentina de municipios frente al cambio climático cuenta con numerosos y destacados profesionales mundialmente conocidos por el cumplimiento de sus objetivos, especialmente sus intendentes que están rankeados en los primeros lugares por dar cumplimiento a esto que dije. Mi agradecimiento como alcalde de Belville por esta posibilidad de exponer en tan prestigiosa reunión y mi satisfacción de ser el vicepresidente primero de esta herramienta que se llama Fideicomiso y que es internacional y está generada aquí desde la Argentina. Figura que por supuesto recomiendo de acuerdo a la legalidad de cada país porque funciona. Es económica, es práctica, levanta la calidad y exige a los propios estados a mejorar sus estándares. Y finalmente les cuento que mientras en Argentina los estamentos superiores del gobierno nacional y gobierno provincial aún no acuerdan los pasos a seguir, un grupo importante de municipios 
ya logramos sostener acciones concretas a través de esta herramienta que constituye y sostiene confianza para llegar a ampliar la posibilidad de financiamiento externo. Es decir, si nosotros ponemos uno, tratar de conseguir de entidades internacionales otro tanto igual en financiamiento al menos para que la cuestión se vuelva más pareja. Por eso buscamos a través de esta herramienta llamada Fideicomiso generar confianza. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mayor Carlos. And most of all, uh, thank you to, uh, to demonstrate. And I believe that we have here from Latin America uh, two examples from RAMCC in Argentina in one specific activity to try to demonstrate the strength of going together with uh, different small and mid-sized cities to be able to attract and to make the investments that are so neat in the climate, in an, in an, in an aggressive uh, climate policy and with ABM in Brazil, the capability of, uh, of one organization's part of our steering committee uh, in Brazil to identify the need to join force forces between medium and small cities uh, in the country, so that's as Brazil. So thank you so much for both your presentations. Uh, and, and I would like to give to Angie uh, the floor to make our final statement of this, of this panel. Rodrigo, thank you. And thanks to all of our mayors for their comments. Um, I would like to use our last seven minutes of, of this portion of the program uh, to just ask each of the mayors to reflect on the urgency question. Um, we've seen the reality of the IPCC six assessment report from working group one. Um, and what we've heard here at COP, um, you've all highlighted some challenges and some uh, opportunities and some progress in your communities. If you could just reflect on um, the urgency and how the global covenant of mayors and this collaboration across organizations and cities can help you to address that urgency. Um, shall we ask um, Mayor Arnold, please, to reflect? Well, thank you, Angie. Uh, well, I, I mean, like everyone else, it's coming at us from so many different angles that we, we don't even re really know. Um, things that, for example, our, our water supply, the blue-green algae in our water supply, we didn't see that coming. But with the climate change, all of a sudden, you know, we have really fresh, fantastic water where we are. But because of climate change, we have a toxic bloom in our water supply. It won't be fit to even bathe in, that's really, really serious. But we didn't see that coming, you know, five years ago, four years ago. So uh, I think if um, I think if COVID has actually taught us anything, it is that we can affect incredible change when we have to. And I just hope that we don't wait till it's like extreme, extreme situations before we can affect that change. But I think municipalities, I mean, I'm a big believer in cities, obviously, and I believe that city building is nation building. And what we're doing at the city level is, is affecting the biggest change in, in the world right now. And, uh, but we need the tools and we need to, um, you know, be on board. And I just would like to say that from my experience, most of the mayors that I talk to are definitely on board, but we want to do it in a concerted and collaborative way. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you, Mayor Kelly. Well, thank you. And the urgency uh, is definitely felt here in Kansas City. Uh, one way is in our built structures. With our emissions inventory, we found that 63% of the emissions from our region come from built structures, but also based on the challenges we're seeing in increased heating degree days and cooling days, we recognize that we need to build our structures for Minneapolis winters and Houston summers. And uh, additionally, that is disproportionately affecting those who live in low to moderate income multifamily housing um, and all, exacerbating already uh, the vulnerability uh, crisis within uh, our metropolitan region based on the cost of utilities. So we need to uh, take advantage of existing opportunities uh, through collaborative resources that already exist and put a climate lens towards those. Uh, one of the 
uh, great partners that we have is the Mid-America Regional Council, who is the regional planning body in Kansas City already, and utilizing those existing relationships to then put a climate lens on the uh, work that they already do. The recognition uh, couldn't be more clear to Mayor Arnold's point, climate connects to everything, whether it be the transportation or food systems or, or other just general local policies. So taking advantage of those existing organizations and then empowering them through international partnerships like the Global Covenant uh, and ICLE, uh, we're so appreciative of those opportunities uh, and look forward to uh, doing the good work uh, that is to come. Thanks, Mayor, Mayor Kelly. Thank you so much. And following lead, I'd like to ask for Mayor Fernanda. Uh, Mayor Fernanda, I, I don't know, I'm going to directly in Portuguese if you allow me. Um, justamente com o objetivo de poder ter uma breve fala, prefeita, uh, it, qual, qual seria o elemento de urgência da pauta climática colocada para os municípios uh, como Brasileia no Brasil e na região e a maneira como a senhora de maneira muito muito breve lhe pediria para suas falas finais poder entender a lógica da urgência climática que nós estamos vivendo para que a gente possa ter o um comprometimento é, com as ações climáticas que a gente tanto sonha aí com que a gente tanto vem trabalhando nós estamos há cinco anos trabalhando para que nós possamos ter essa referência de preservação aliar a questão social e aliar a questão econômica. Eu penso que um dos maiores desafios é o acesso aos créditos, como os municípios podem ter acesso aos créditos e também nós podemos ter mão de obra capacitada, técnicos capacitados. Hoje eu acho que é a nossa maior emergência é, no nosso município e na nossa região. Nós, municípios de pequenos portes, com o orçamento que nós temos, nós não conseguimos ter essa mão de obra qualificada, então é importante, nós, é necessário para que a gente possa ter o tripé da questão ambiental e o tripé da questão climática, é necessário mão de obra qualificada. Eu penso que hoje é um dos maiores desafios. Ah, todas as ações que nós estamos fazendo dentro de Brasileia, que são muitas as ações, é, tanto na questão da cidade como também na questão urbana, nós avançamos muito mas é necessário que nós possamos ter acesso às, aos financiamentos e que nós possamos ter acesso à, à mão de obra qualificada. Sem isso, é impossível. Nós vamos estar, nós vamos estar remando e nós vamos, não, não conseguiremos sair do lugar. Então, eu penso que hoje um dos maiores gargalos, um dos maiores desafios são esses dois. Thank you, Mayor Fernanda. And fantastic to know that sometimes those in those moments to try to emphasize how small, mid-sized cities they are in need of some like qualified workforce, as you as you emphasize that sometimes is not seen in the big picture projects that sometimes are debated here at COP. And so so necessary to emphasize those those moments and situation. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Fernanda. And uh, I'd like to call to ask to join us for his final statement as well, Dr. Carlos Briner. Uh, señor Alcalde, se me permite, yo me gustaría de preguntarlo justamente este, este elemento de, la, de, los, de los temas de la urgencia, ¿no? ¿Cómo, cómo atacar y cómo estar vinculado con los elementos de la urgencia climática para una ciudad intermedia y una ciudad que tiene la capacidad de inflexión como Belville? Por favor, por favor sus manifestaciones finales. Bueno, eh, Belville es una ciudad que ha tenido muchos, eh, muchos problemas por los cambios climáticos, tornados e inundaciones, y nos adaptamos con una planificación. Eh, la cruza eh, un río muy caudaloso, ese río se engavionó, se, re, se le reforzaron la totalidad de sus barrancas, se mejoró el sistema de desagües, y ahora eh, se está trabajando justamente en financiamiento eh, desde provincia y desde Nación Argentina para mejorar aún más todo lo que son eh, las vías de desagües. Eh, tenemos lluvias muy copiosas, el cambio climático aquí se siente muy fuerte a pesar de ser eh, una zona muy fértil. 
Eh, y por otra parte, bueno, trabajamos en la mitigación desde lo, lo sustentable a través de esta herramienta financiera, como dije, que está reconocida por el Fondo Verde del Clima y por la Unión Europea como válida. Pero todavía no hemos podido hacer efectivo ningún desembolso para ampliar eh, la cantidad de dinero posible para trabajar en estas vías. Excellent. Thank you all so much. This concludes this panel. We want to thank all of the leaders for joining us today. And um, Jordan, passing over to you. Sure. Thanks so much, Angie and Rodrigo, for moderating that panel. And thanks to all of our uh, excellent panelists for sharing your thoughts, your experiences, reflections uh, on this tremendous challenge. And, and it's been really inspiring to hear uh, from so many different contexts and realities from throughout the from throughout the continent, uh, the ways in which uh, you're taking this on, and 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 especially uh, representing small and medium-sized municipalities, uh, um, specifying that we're talking about terms of population, right, and not uh, total territory, which is a very important point to make. Thank you uh, for that, Angie. Uh, it's been uh, really a pleasure to be able to hear from the experience, and I, and we hope that uh, you've been able also to learn from each other. Uh, and inspire those who are connected from, from all over the world and, and, and all over the continent. So um, thanks again to our, to our speakers on the panel. I would like to now um, hand the word over to Shauna uh, Sylvester, who is Professor of Professional Practice at Simon Fraser University in Canada. Uh, Shauna is gonna provide us with uh, some final reflections and she's joining us there on stage. Uh, with Jennifer from Glasgow in the LGMA Pavilion. So uh, over to you, Shana. Thanks a lot for being here. Thank you so much, Jordan. First of all, thank you, Jennifer, for the setting that you provided for us. I thought that the summary that you brought to us just put the context so beautifully on where we are with cities. I listened deeply and it was, it was wonderful to be challenged to listen in Portuguese and in Spanish, and it felt wonderful to be listening to, to Spanish again. I don't speak Portuguese, but I certainly listened and understood far more than I thought I did. Um, so I wanted just, there was one thing that came out to me so clearly in what everyone was saying, and that we are at a stage of collaboration. You started and said you were glad you put the competition and collaboration. That actually was a theme that came through from every single person that I heard. And the collaboration was one of going not just city to city, but city to subregion and city to national. And then just how important those global collaborations are to communities and cities and, and small and medium size. There was a number of ways in which I think that we have to learn about collaboration together, and that's around the financing, just how important cities acting to get together can bring investment, can bring new financing tools, can advocate at that broader level, at that city level. The other area where I thought we were hearing a great deal is around new forms of planning um, to ad address the challenges we hadn't expected to have. You know, you've got Mayor Arnold in Moncton dealing with a toxic bloom, hadn't expected it. What other countries have had to deal with that and how do we collaborate to get to that? So the whole issue of that collaboration to bring lessons learned across different jurisdictions was so important. The other was an interesting piece that Mayor Kelly talked about is we're living in a time of increased polarization and just the misinformation. And you talked about the importance of data that got reiterated just over and over again is we need to know and understand what we're up against. We know, need to know and understand how the actions we're taking are leading to different circumstances. I also thought it was interesting, we don't often hear uh, people at the city's level talk about engagement and you talked about engagement, but so did our friends from Brazil, Brasilia talk about engagement and that importance around education and just how critical understanding what people are up against, just what city staff are, the lack of professional capacity that exists at that small and local level, and just how important it is to bring all of those lessons, those case studies, to build that capacity and and, and, and share those resources. So if I come away from this, I think, you know, I've worked with cities, I remember when 
mayors in, in Paris signed on to the 1,000 mayors signed on to the renewable, 100% renewable. And then we had 1,049 mayors sign on here at COP at COP26 to the race to zero. You've got the work that you've been doing, but it's just a different environment. Now, I kept thinking as I listened to all of the brilliance that was on that panel, what if we didn't care about what happened to the cops and cities moved? And we talked about city building being nation building, but just the innovation, the action, we're not waiting for the blueprint, cities are creating it. And I just wanted to say that I was so inspired by what I heard today. Thank you for your work in putting this forward in terms of how you laid the framework, but also to ICLEI, also to all of the others that were involved in putting this together and GCOM especially for the work that they're doing. Over to you, Jordan. Great, thank you so much, Shauna, for those reflections. Uh, it's really great to, to hear that, that perspective uh, on, on being able to hear these different voices uh, and really shining through with this message of, of cities being leaders, cities leading the charge uh, and, and really deserving a place at the table and, and showing through their example and through their commitment and, and their concrete actions that uh, you know they're not waiting, they're forging ahead uh, and it's certainly uh, something to be said that, uh, especially in the case of these uh, of these cities that face these challenges, as you, as you so eloquently mentioned, they don't have the resources. The, many times they don't have uh, the, the same level of capacity as, as larger cities, uh, but they're finding a way. They're finding a way to really uh, move forward and, and take charge uh, and, and be an inspiration to, uh, to other cities from around the world. So thanks a lot for those reflections. And I now have uh, the distinct pleasure and honor uh, to invite uh, to the panel, uh, Mayor Jorge Munoz Wells, uh, Mayor of Lima in Peru, and also a uh, member of the Global Covenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy uh, Board on the global level. So uh, welcome, Mayor Munoz. Uh, go ahead, the floor is yours. Muchas gracias. Muy buenas tardes. Un cordial saludo a los alcaldes y alcaldesas, a los líderes nacionales e internacionales, a los delegados, a los representantes de las instituciones aliadas y a quienes nos han acompañado en este evento tan importante para las ciudades, sin duda, y para los gobiernos locales dentro del marco de lo que es la COP26. Es un honor dirigirme a ustedes como representante de las ciudades de América Latina y el Caribe dentro de la Junta Directiva del Pacto Global de Alcaldes para el Clima y la Energía. Una alianza global de más de 10.000 ciudades y gobiernos locales donde compartimos una visión a largo plazo sobre las acciones para combatir el cambio climático con liderazgo y esfuerzo para contribuir a los objetivos del Acuerdo de París. Según datos de Naciones Unidas, se estima que para el año 2050, más del 68% de la población mundial vivirá en centros urbanos, generando un mayor crecimiento poblacional en nuestras ciudades y eh, teniendo un impacto en las ciudades o países de ingresos medios y bajos. Tomando en cuenta estas proyecciones, desde sus inicios, el GCOM ha buscado brindar apoyo a todo tipo de municipios, sean estos grandes o pequeños. Sin embargo, tras la adhesión de las principales capitales a nivel mundial, el potencial crecimiento de la alianza del GCOM ha radicado en la incorporación de ciudades intermedias y pequeñas, las cuales tendrán mayor crecimiento poblacional en la próxima década. En particular, las que se encuentran en la periferia de las grandes urbes. En este contexto, es necesario e imprescindible encontrar soluciones y estrategias que permitan al conjunto de municipios, ya sean grandes o pequeños, sumarse a la acción climática a partir de contribuciones y esfuerzos que sean esfuerzos de importancia para reforzar el esfuerzo nacional. Ante ello, el diálogo entre ciudades del continente americano, como el que se ha celebrado hoy en este evento, demuestra el valor añadido de la alianza del GCOM en promover el intercambio de experiencias y buenas prácticas para acelerar la acción climática local. 
a lo largo del evento se ha demostrado que las ciudades pequeñas y medianas tienen la oportunidad de sumar esfuerzos y recursos al reagruparse en torno a acciones conjuntas y buenas prácticas que permitan brindar mayor escala a la acción climática local. Hoy se han mencionado ejemplos de planificación climática conjunta, inventarios de gases de efecto invernadero colectivos, así como la creación de un fideicomiso con el esfuerzo de un conjunto de municipios que comparten un objetivo común. ¿Cuál es ese objetivo común? Reducir su impacto en el medio ambiente e incrementar su capacidad de adaptación al cambio climático. A través de estos ejemplos buscamos seguir inspirando a los numerosos municipios pequeños y medianos de nuestro continente para que puedan superar los retos que les supone la falta de recursos humanos y financieros en sus propias localidades. Esto lo vamos a hacer a partir de la colaboración multiactor y multinivel. Esto es muy importante. Asimismo, también buscamos inspirar a las secretarías de los pactos regionales y nacionales e incluso a la Secretaría Global del GICOM para que se facilite la puesta a disposición de herramientas, metodologías y capacitaciones para grupos de municipios pequeños que decidan actuar conjuntamente mediante el desarrollo de sus planes locales para así hacer frente a los desafíos del cambio climático en nuestras distintas localidades. Desde el ámbito financiero se presenta la oportunidad de apoyar a grupos de municipios que suman esfuerzos para formular proyectos, estos proyectos que deben escalar una, a una mayor escala, respondiendo así a los intereses de muchos inversores. El ejemplo del fideicomiso promovido por la Red Argentina de Municipios frente al cambio climático es una excelente práctica que merece mayor visibilidad para atraer inversionistas adicionales a los fondos ya aportados por los propios municipios y sería de suma importancia que pueda replicarse en otros países del continente. Finalmente, es necesario mencionar que las grandes ciudades del continente también tienen la responsabilidad de brindar apoyo a las más pequeñas. Es un apoyo solidario que todos tenemos que brindar, en particular a aquellas eh, municipalidades pequeñas que forman parte del área metropolitana o la periferia de cada una de estas eh, regiones. Desde Lima... Comprometidos con esta visión, hemos generado espacios de diálogo para impulsar que los municipios distritales dentro del área metropolitana y los demás gobiernos locales dentro del Perú desarrollen sus planes locales, tomando como ejemplo nuestro plan local de cambio climático que se ha aprobado este año y que tiene un umbral hasta el año 2030. Este tipo de cooperación se puede llevar a cabo compartiendo experiencias, conocimientos, datos, herramientas, metodologías de trabajo que sean relevantes en un determinado contexto y esto nos tiene que llevar a tener resultados positivos. Como gobiernos locales tenemos la prioridad inmediata de proteger a nuestra población frente a distintos desafíos y al mismo tiempo mirar hacia el futuro estableciendo el camino para generar y mantener soluciones sostenibles hacia sociedades inclusivas, resilientes y prósperas. Tenemos que crear también siempre una buena armonía y felicidad entre los ciudadanos. Sigamos pues impulsando la cooperación entre ciudades, redes e instituciones internacionales y nacionales para una acción climática en América fortalecida y alineada a los compromisos globales que nos permitan asegurar el desarrollo sostenible en nuestro continente. Muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes por haberme dado la oportunidad de dirigirme a ustedes y a sus distintas plataformas, pues este es un momento muy importante dentro de lo que es la COP26 en Glasgow. Un gran abrazo y nuestra fraternidad desde Lima, Perú. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much, Mayor Muñoz, for your for your uh, very valuable reflections on the entire. I think you really brought together well the the different points that were made by the different panelists and and were able to kind of bring it into the context of this uh, recurring theme: this need for collaboration, this need for cooperation and solidarity between cities uh, and and localities of different sizes. 
uh, in, in different locations from throughout the continent. It, it was really a, a, a very nice finishing touch for this event. Um, I would like to thank very much, uh, first and foremost, the European Union for its support in, in being able to organize this event uh, and all of the local authorities. Uh, you are the true leaders here, the true inspiration here uh, that have been sharing your experiences is, is in your story. So we've had uh, words from from Barcelona, from from Mon from Moncton, uh, from Roland Park in Kansas City, uh, from Belleville, from Brasileia, uh, and from Lima. Uh, all of which are, have been contributing uh, a lot to this to this panel discussion today, and especially for our organizing partners, uh, WWF and ICLE. Uh, thank you so much for your support in moderating and organizing and setting the scene, uh, and our expert Shauna. Uh, for, for providing these really key reflections at the very end. I think uh, it's been an excellent panel um, I, at this crossroads. I think Mayor Munoz uh, said it well. We're at a critical juncture now. Uh, there's just a couple of days left at COP. Uh, so uh, Shauna uh, and uh, Jennifer, good luck <laughs> in these last couple of days. Uh, may it be a, a fruitful event. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, come, come out with uh, some victories as far as uh, placing cities and towns really at the level of where they need to be, uh, showing their leadership uh, and providing uh, inspiration from around the world. So from the GCOM family, thank you for everyone who's been following us uh, from around the world. Count on the GCOM Americas project uh, to continue supporting uh, cities from throughout the region in all of the tremendous efforts that they're making uh, to really push the agenda and push the envelope forward uh, for ambitious climate commitments and action. Thank you all very much and good afternoon, good evening uh, to, to all of you from around the world.